distancing. FTW. And not F the world. It's for the win. Social distancing for the win. You are tuned in to the Lone Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, along with my main man, JC. John Coleman. So here we are, like week two of the coronavirus. Week two, if you uh, live in North America. Correct. It's uh, week 22, if you are somewhat in tune to what goes on in countries not called the United States of America. Correct. All right, not home, specifically week 22. That's probably, no, it's probably like last year, but you know. Week 12, week 12, week 18. Look, it's been around for a while. It's finally here. We're finally dealing with it. Correct. And social distancing is all the craze. Right? So all, it is what all the cool kids are doing. It is every reason why my wife and I had to sit down with our children a few nights ago and let them know we're not driving to the airport, we're not getting on the airplane, and we're not going to Hawaii. Although we planned a trip nine months ago and we've been looking forward to it ever since. And it was interesting because how do you explain to your kids who are kids, right? So their, their brains are not fully developed, they're not fully mature. And you explain that we're all fairly healthy, we're all fairly young, and we're not worried about us getting sick, and we're not worried about if we get sick, what will happen. We're pretty confident the odds are in our favor. But do we want to be assholes? That's what I said to my 15-year-old. Like, if we choose to go to Hawaii, we're basically selfish assholes. Because we are putting our fun, our inability to say no, in front of other people's safety. And look, is there a guarantee that um, if I have coronavirus, I won't spread it to someone else? No. 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 I mean, look, if I have it, I have it. Um, well, you probably gave it to me now that we're doing this podcast. But. I do believe we're about six feet apart. Purposefully six feet apart. Literally, I wouldn't shake his hand today. I wouldn't even give him an elbow bump or a fist bump. We are practicing social distancing. We do have, just FYI, two-thirds of our office is working from home. We highly encourage everyone to work from home. Um, but there's some people that uh, prefer coming into the office. They shut their door. They don't talk to anybody. They keep the door shut, and life moves on. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but when, when we're on the topic of social distancing, and I was telling the story about, about Hawaii and, like, having to explain to my 15-year-old, it, it helped me really understand what I was doing. Like, I was making sure that I was not putting myself in places where if I was a carrier, I could give it to that many more people. Mm-hmm. Or if I wasn't yet a carrier, I was putting myself in situations where an influx of carriers once were, places like LAX, places like hotels, places mm-hmm. like airlines, right? Um, so when we are social distancing for the win, and this is going to be a very free-flowing conversation with you and I, just some thoughts that I've had as, as, a, as an employer, um, as a parent, and really as an American. Like, to me, social distancing is the most patriotic thing you can do. I'm not worried about me getting sick. I'm not worried about my kids getting sick. I feel confident that if we get the virus, we'll be able to fight it. Heck, we might not even know we had it when we did have it. But if I'm not listening to the experts and I'm not practicing social distancing, then I very well could come and give you a handshake because I chose to get on my airline because I chose to fly to LAX, I chose to go to one of the more popular hotels that are most popular tourist destination. And now you go home and you give your elderly mother or grandmother or aunt a hug or a kiss hello. And now all of a sudden, I killed your grandma. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's that serious. Like, those that don't want to practice social distancing, to me, it's un-American. And I know that's a very hard stance to take, but that's how I view it. That's how I was able to wrap my head around it. Because guess what? I wanted to go to Hawaii. I wanted to be one of those people that was like, I'm not going to get sick. And if I do get sick, I'm going to kick this virus to death. But I also don't want to kill your grandma. Right? And I don't want to kill my buddy's dad. Or I don't want to make my sister-in-law's baby um, have to be in ICU. 
And if I can social distance, if I can do what I can to stay secluded, then I'm limiting my ability to go out and harm others. Why do you think I don't drink and drive? Besides it's illegal and frowned down upon and everything else. Uh, yeah, because you a possibility of hurting somebody else. Yeah, I don't want to hurt someone else. Right? Usually people that are drinking and driving, they don't care about their own safety. Correct. That's why they're doing it. But it's all well and good to drink and drive until you kill someone. It's all well and good to text and drive until you kill someone. Well, that to me is COVID-19, coronavirus, and social distancing. It's all well and good until your selfish actions kill someone. And how would you feel in hindsight knowing that you were going to bars, you were going to restaurants, you were attending sporting events if they were still hosting them, you chose to go to Hawaii, and you came back and you're now tied to three infections and possibly one death. I don't know how someone would live with themselves. I don't know how I would live with myself. So social distance to the wind. What are you all doing in your household? Like, what's it been like for you and your wife and your friends? Like, what are you hearing? What are people saying? Mm, Anything concerning you? Yeah, not yet. Not for us. Um, this, just this past weekend, we went to the beach uh, on the East Coast, um, Cape Canaveral, and it was fine. I mean, it was we nobody was on top of us. It was good. Um, at home, nothing different. I mean, we try to wipe down some stuff and wash our hands a little bit more. The only thing different is my hands are getting cakey dry now, so now I need some more lotion. Um, but other than that, has, not there, has there been a run on shea butter? <laughs> like, I know there's been a run on toilet paper. Somebody, somebody somewhere is profiting from all of this, uh, whether it be lotion, whether it be toilet paper. Someone's making a killing off this, but okay. I just don't know who. But Yeah. No, and I ask that because I, I like you, um, I, mean, I live on on vaseline intensive care with yeah. hand lotion i go and get some theraflex yeah so i, I kind of chuckle when you're like yeah none of these changes that my hands are dry as shit yeah <laughs> Um, but no, that's the only thing that's really different. I mean, we kind of pay attention to what's going on, but uh, we honestly tend not to get caught up in the hype. Um, we're not like, I mean, we're not like sheltered in where we're not like going out saying hi to people, but at the same time, people really aren't coming over either. So it, right now it's just kind of a waiting game, kind of wait and see what happens to see kind of where this thing nets out. What about your friends? I'm just out of curiosity, when, when you talk or text with your friends, what's, what's, the, what's been their mindset? Honestly, the mindset of my friends is whatever is, is being regurgitated on the news. So if they're like social distancing seems to be the thing now, that's what's on their mind. Last week it was toilet paper because everybody was running out. I'm sure next week the theme will change. So it really kind of ebb and flows, uh, ebbs and flows, depending on what the media is kind of saying. Can you help explain to me? I don't understand the run on TV. What's the run on toilet paper? Like I've, I've read multiple CDC reports. Correct. And, and I've listened to as many experts as I can find. Mm -hmm. No one has once told me I'm going to get the shit if I get coronavirus. Let me ask you something. You've been in Florida your whole life. Yeah. You've experienced some pretty bad, you know, natural disasters, weather, hurricanes. Yeah, hurricanes yeah. Well, so hurricanes, you know, it'll knock out the power for a couple days, if not weeks. You've experienced that, right? Yes. Was toilet paper ever on your mind then? No, but it should have been. Right? Like, it, like, like, I just don't get why toilet paper literally... Because nowhere does it say I'm going to get diarrhea. Because it was, get... it was a social experiment. It was a trend. Just like those dances that you say, where did this come from? Where did these challenges come from? How, where did this come from now? Everybody's doing it. I think somewhere it must have been a social experiment to see, like, wait a minute. What if I just said you should stock up on toilet paper? And what if people believe me? And then what if people just hoard it? Are you it? saying it's a conspiracy and, like, the company that uh, produces Charmin might have been behind it? Yes. <laughs> to, in some weird shape, uh, yeah, kind of. I, I really do believe. I'm a weird conspiracy theorist at times, so I, I go kind of on both ends of the spectrum. But, yeah, there's no need to hoard toilet paper. Well, no, because no one has told me coronavirus is going to knock out my hot water heater. It's going to knock out my water supply. It's going to knock out my electricity. So, worst case, if I can't find toilet paper... Can I not go jump in the shower right after I use the Listen, bathroom? that's a great point. My thought is, like, do people really come to work to depend on, like, taking their daily shit? Me, I'm a shy crapper. I refuse to use the bathroom in public at work. I'll hold it. I'll pinch it until I get home. So for me, when people say, like, oh, no, like, this is the only time I get to shit is when I come to work. It's just really eye-opening from a cultural standpoint. Yeah. Um, 
That's very interesting. It, it, it is cool to, to see from a cultural standpoint and a, a almost a social experimenting standpoint, mm. and we won't know anything until three genera- it's all well and done. Right? Three, three generations from now, when we look back at it, it'll be like, hey, remember that coronavirus thing that they did? Yeah, it's like three generations. It, it, it might be four weeks, eight weeks, or 12 weeks from now when we look back and see who was right, who was wrong, who, mm. was, who was hysterical, and, and who wasn't hysterical enough. Mm-hmm. But... I do live my life when you err on the side of caution. Correct. Never be an asshole and do what's right. Right? We are practicing social distancing because it's what's right. It's a guaranteed way not to be an asshole. And in my opinion, if you help infect someone who ends up dying, then you're an asshole. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. Beyond, if there's a term beyond that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I've also had to say no to things. I had friends in the neighborhood, like good friends, like my buddies, my mm-hmm. boys in the neighborhood. Hey, we're all getting together on Saturday. Why don't you come over? And my wife and I had to sit down and, and had this discussion. We really haven't hung out then since like New Year's. So you're, you know, here we are, we're going on, it's been well over three weeks, maybe four, five, six, eight weeks, going on 10, whatever it's been mm-hmm. since we hung out. I know it's more than three. We didn't go. Saturday night, we didn't go because what we had to realize is for those that listen and you're in a natural disaster area, whether you're in um, like the Carolinas or in the state of Florida where we get hurricanes on a pretty regular basis, or even in areas that, that maybe have floods or fires, um, although I've never really had to experience flood fires or, or, or earthquakes, so I don't know how much this, this actually correlates. I will tell you this how it correlates in Florida and in the Carolinas where we do get hurricanes on a, net, on a, on a consistent basis. Um, this is not a hurricane party. Like, like when a hurricane's coming, we typically prepare for it. We know that it's going to be three days to a week of, for the most part, inconvenient. Mm-hmm. Now, there are sections that get absolutely devastated, like we saw just a couple years ago up in the Panhandle of Florida, and, and, and that's a whole different ball of wax. But for the most part, when we hear a hurricane, you know this one mm-hmm. here for, for the past about 15 years, we kind of get excited. It yeah. is, hey, a couple of days off of work. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to deal with some power loss. And um, yeah, there's going to be a run on gas. And there's mm-hmm. going to be a run on bottled water. But I'm going to get together with my neighbors and we're going to drink. Mm-hmm. And the next day, we're going to get together and drink some more. Correct. And it's kind of like a, a fun camping type experience. Well, this COVID 19 coronavirus, it's not that. Like, social distancing is not that. This is not, hey, kids, you're out of college. Um, early, right? Because yeah. college yeah, yeah. down, go to the bars and hang out with two a.m. No. Who spring break just got extended? It's like no, this is a time mm-hmm. for you to sit on your ass and don't. Yeah, I think another thing that's kind of throwing people for a loop is like usually with natural disasters, you see it coming. The weather, there's there's tangible things that you can see. Okay, it's getting cloudy. Oh, wow, the wind is picking up. Okay, I physically can't go outside because it's raining and it's thundering and it's lightning. So I'm literally sheltered in here. I mean, it's beautiful weather. It's 86 degrees, partly cloudy. So you're in the mindset of like, I, I, I'm on lockdown. I'm in hurricane mode, but the weather is beautiful out and it's springtime. So that's kind of what's kind of throwing people for a loop. Well, then imagine this, because um, you know, there's two types of people in this world, those that were built to work from home and those that weren't. Yeah. I'm one that falls in the latter category. I was not built to work from home. So just recently, I've had to do some major soul searching to remind myself that, hey, I'm a business professional. I help run a mortgage company, and it needs to be business as usual because interest rates are at an all-time low. We should be reaching out to our past clients, showing them how we can save them thousands of dollars with a refinance. There are still going to be people looking to buy homes. Now, not all people, but there are people who are built to work from home or they work in industries or careers that will not be impacted uh, by the coronavirus. Now, our economy will be impacted. And there are some people on the other side that are going to be greatly impacted. And it's it's very sad and, and, and scary for them. But when you're running a business and you're employing 90-some people, you owe it to those 90-some people and their employees for it to be business as close to usual. But there's going to be a new usual. So, again, those that are built to work from home, it's kind of like business as usual. Those that are more like me, I have to A, remind myself daily this is not a hurricane, right? This is not a couple days off, let's get together with the neighbors. 
and, and I need to find a new normal, right? I need to get good at using technologies such as Zoom Media or Blue Jeans. I need to figure out how to maybe do more via my social media accounts because I can't go out and visit clients face to face. But um, I need to keep going. I, I need to get up every morning and have a routine. Now, for me, I need a new routine because my routine of going to the gym doesn't work when the gym's closed. My routine of being at the office at this time doesn't work because I don't have the time I'm working from home. So something that I'm going to try to practice and I'm going to encourage others to do, especially those that fall in the category of not being built to work from home, is develop a routine. So every single morning, make sure you get up and you get dressed. Schedule purposefully some kind of a call or a meeting by 8, 8.30 or 9. Because if you force yourself to get in front of your computer and, and, and next to your phone by 8.30 or 9, you're already in the groove of working for the day. And get creative and adapt. If you can't go out and physically have lunch with somebody, could you not in, invite them to maybe um, do a video chat with you? Or if you typically teach a class, could you not open up Facebook and do a Facebook Live? Like these are all things that, that we can be doing so we can practice social distancing for the win, which prevents us from putting ourselves in situations where we can um, uh, attract the virus, carry the virus, spread the virus, so that we can not be assholes. And then start thinking about all the positives that can come from this isolation. Like, my garage hasn't been cleaned in three years. My car could use waxing. Um, I've never spent this much time one-on-one -on -one with my son, and I'm enjoying it. I've always really wanted to ride my bike more. I can't go to the gym. Maybe I pull my bike out of the attic, which is where it is right now. And maybe I greased up the chain, and may maybe I ride it. You know, there's, there's so many things. Reading books. How dare you? <laughs> Reading books. Listening to podcasts. There's a now. There's a novel idea. You know, you know, I've I've always wanted to listen to a whole entire Joe Rogan podcast, but those MFers are three hours long. Well, maybe if I'm practicing social distancing, I'll be able to get through a whole entire podcast. You know that Lone Officer podcast? I keep on seeing the ads. For I've it. heard about that. You know, I haven't had a chance to actually listen to every single episode. Maybe I can do that now. So there's definitely some positives that will come out of this. Um, but it's new and it's unique and it's fluid. By fluid, it's it's ever changing. Correct, and I I I think this is the new normal because we won't be able to go back after this. I think three four years from now, people are still like when you go to handshake them, they'll double guess and be like, wait a minute. Um, so I think it's interesting. I think this is going to usher us into a new age of technology. Interesting. Because people after this, the the, the hysteria has reached such a fever pitch. Um, that I think people will be affected by so much that when they go in the airport or the airplane, they'll be like, I'm not touching that. Even after this whole thing has passed, I think it's been ingrained in um, the entire world's kind of psyche that uh, things are going to change and be a lot different once this whole thing passes. That's an interesting take on it. Um, and, and I can see both sides of it. Like my kids who are 12 and 15, they don't know what it's like to fly and not take the shoes off. But those of us who are over the age of 30 mm -hmm. know darn well what it's like to be able to fly and never have to take your shoes off to get to security. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's going to be like that. Oh, yeah. Right? Like it's, it's going to change the landscape forever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I look at how patriotic and lovey we all were post 9 11. I mean, it was all for one, one for all. And that waned. That went pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. It's been six, nine months, and then you look at it today and how how divided mm -hmm. we have become and allowed ourselves to become, especially when it comes to like like political division. I don't know how much of it's going to stick. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. At a minimum, I think we're now prepared to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, prior to 2004, as a lifelong Floridian, I really didn't know how to prepare for a hurricane. Because before that, there were nothing but hurricane scares, unless you live down in South Florida and you experienced Hurricane Andrew. Mm -hmm. But for most of us Central Floridians, we didn't. And then starting in 2004, all the way up until this year, no, we're really prepared. Mm -hmm. Because now we've seen hurricanes actually come and impact us in Central Florida. Mm -hmm. 
I'm hoping you're you're not 100 percent right. I'm hoping. In fact, I'm like hoping. I know I, you're right. Yeah. I, I know that it's going to forever impact us. I know that it's going to change some behaviors. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's going to be some companies that realize that they can be equally as productive with uh, uh, people working from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be some companies that uh, realize they don't need as much commercial real estate space. Mm-hmm. Which then that that uh, that's a good question for uh, my friend and even my cousin who was working commercial real estate and my brother-in-law. How does it impact their business going forward? If let's just say twenty percent of businesses realize that they don't need office space, what what does that do to all the commercial space we currently have? And is it is it, is it a detrimental or a negative impact? This has gotten so bad to this point. I'm, I'm gonna make this point. If you're in public, if you're at home, if you're at a light and someone coughs around you, now you're all automatically, you, your sense is like, oh, shit, oh, shit. You're always thinking about that now. It, now it's become um, subconscious. Like if someone coughs around you now, you're like, oh, shit, do they have it? Even it's past the joke and now it's become like, oh, yep. Um, but I, I don't see that going away even after this is good because now it's like, what are they carrying? What do they have? So are you not worried at all? Like, like I mean, again, we're so early mm-hmm. in, into the coronavirus. Um, we're heeding the advice of, our, of, of mm-hmm. the experts. What if, what if we kick ass? Mm -hmm. What if we as a society social distance enough Mm -hmm. and by canceling the sporting events and the concerts and the group gatherings and going to bars, Mm -hmm. what if it actually works the way that it's intended to work Mm -hmm. and then three weeks we're like back to normal, we we have enough test kits, Mm -hmm. we're working on a vaccine. We're not worried about hospital beds because that's that's the reason for the social distancing. Mm-hmm. Right now, as I understand it, we're doing so not so that coronavirus doesn't impact us. It's just so that we can handle it. Correct. And that that we can slow the pace at which it's it's infecting people and growing, so that we don't overload our hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. What if again we kick ass at it? How many citizens of our society do you think? Are then going to look back and be like, "You guys totally overreacted." Like, oh, of course, of course, of course. They're just going to say that we overreacted and see it was nothing. Yep, it was the same thing that hurricane that was supposed to eradicate us a couple months ago, and everybody boarded up their homes and it completely missed us. Yeah, so so you're saying those people that board up their homes are going to be less likely to board up their Mm, homes? Correct, but I think also I don't know. I'm not a I'm, I'm not a scientist. I just play one on this podcast from time to time. Um, but they say just like the plague back in like the 1800s, it comes in phases. So like the first wave, second wave, third wave. So even if it goes away or subsides a little bit, I could see it coming back um, and it kind of uh, making another run. But I mean, who knows? Shit, just I don't know. It's, it's gonna be crazy. So I was kind of correlating the hurricanes uh, after the hurricane up in Panhandle a couple of years ago. Uh, myself and a few other buddies drove up to try to lend assistance, mm-hmm. right? We brought supplies, we spent a couple of days cleaning up people's yards, helping them get trees off their houses, etc. And it was interesting. We talked to those that rode it out, and they said never again. Yeah, never again. Never, ever again, I'm going to haul ass, and I'm going to get as far away from that storm as I can. Now, prior to that, I'm sure their stance was, oh, F this, it's just another hurricane. Oh, yeah. We're good, I got enough supplies, and... We have batteries and flashlights and, and, and lights all well and good. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's life in general. It's never an issue until it becomes one. Correct. And the minute it becomes one, it's like, oh, I'm going to be an advocate. And it's, um, wow. I mean, we're, we're getting real deep if we really want to dive into, into that, which I'll, I'll digress and, and try to stay from that rabbit hole. But it's going to be interesting. We're, we, are, we are in interesting times. I think the only thing we can do and I, I talked about this at the beginning of the podcast. Let's be good patriots. Like, let's be good Americans, good citizens of the world. And let's heed the advice of experts. Let's quit trying to be uh, backseat drivers and Monday morning quarterbacks. Look, unless you have PhD behind your name, unless you work in the medical field, let's not even try to be experts. Let's be good soldiers. And let's be good citizens, and let's just be good humans, and do what's asked of us. Stay positive. Get creative. Don't shut down. It's not a hurricane. It's not a hurricane party time. Let's keep it business as usual, and if we need to, let's adapt and create a new usual for instances like this. I mean, to me, that is social distancing for the win. 
I would agree. Stop playing Doogie Howser. Stop playing Doogie Howser. There's only one. Did you watch that show? Yeah. I loved that. Absolutely. <laughs> Neil Patrick Diamond. Yeah, Harris or something. Neil, Neil Patrick Harris? Yeah, or it came on right before or after Wonder Years, depending what channel you used to watch yeah, it on. That was fantastic. Um, no, that's it. I mean, it's. Uh, uh, hopefully, y'all found this, this episode to be uh, entertaining, insightful. I uh, don't know if we educated you one bit, but hopefully, if we provoke some thought, uh, we did our job. Absolutely. Uh, we're doing the best that we can to bring you subjects and topics that are relevant. Today was social distancing for the win. Social distancing for the win. I'm Dustin Owen. He's John Coleman. And we're getting the f*** out of here. Peace.